and release. Again, breathe in through the belly, breathe in through the chest, hold at the top, and release. <sighs> Welcome to this session. My name is Rachel Morrison, and during these times, it's important for us to know that there's a new game that we can play together that's different, very different than what has come to create today's circumstances. And our team here today has a wonderful presentation of uh, what has worked for us and ways that you guys can integrate some new ideas possibly into your lives. And without further ado, I'd like to invite Sarah into the conversation to lead us into some facilitation. Hello, everybody. Great to see you here. We're all coming from a world that we know generates illness. Here we are in the middle of a pandemic, but it generates many other kinds of illness too. And the team that's come together here, which has come together over the last three weeks, uh, we are looking to generate a world that's operating on principles of wellness rather than illness and move from the I to the we, ultimately to the us. And so the question is, how do we do that from within the belly of the beast, from within the world that we're living in now? And how do we figure out the rules of this new game? And what we've been doing is prototyping the game and we've been part of a social innovation lab over the past three weeks. We were forced to make it virtual. We were supposed to meet live at Esalen, but like everybody else in the world, we were forced to, to change the way we approach things. Out of that innovation lab has come this workshop and some other initiatives in a very short time that we're gonna share with you here today. And before we go into that though, I'd like to ask uh, those who are on the call here to introduce yourselves, to share in the chat feature. And if you haven't used Zoom before, if you move your mouse down toward the bottom of your screen, you should see an icon that says chat. And that allows us to have a chat <laughs> conversation uh, side by side with seeing each other during this presentation. If you just write your name and where you're from, and if you choose to uh, and have one, uh, an organizational affiliation that you think we should know, that would be great. And that way we'll start to get to know each other because this is about starting a conversation and a dialogue. We'd also like to know any questions that you have brought with you into this workshop. We only have an hour, it's a short time, but we want to make this as interactive as possible. And the chat window uh, is the way we're, we're gonna be able to do that most efficiently given our limited time. But we hope that this conversation will continue after this and so we're going to make sure you know how to be part of the ongoing conversation. So I'm gonna give you a minute to put your names into the chat and sorry, uh, perhaps you can chime in and let us know where uh, people are, are calling in from and, and give us a sense of who we've got with us today in this conversation. Hi, my name is Sari Stenfors and uh, I'm your technical host here reading your chat and uh, um, wow, we have a lot of people here today. Uh, 26 people so far have joined and, and more coming all the time. Uh, we have uh, Simone from Vienna and uh, uh, Sarb from uh, Devon, UK, Sandra, Lisbon and Oxford both at the same time now, virtually. Um, Claudia, uh, take Sarah. Um, Eva from Barcelona, Erin, Canada, Tom, Oxford. Cease from uh, um, Colorado, Loveland. Oh, Sunrise Ranch, beautiful. Uh, Lucian from San Francisco. Um, Colleen, Bellingham, Svenja, Muni. Uh, I think I missed quite quite many here. It, uh, our stream is coming. Welcome, everybody.
Sarah, you're muted. What our team concluded after a short time of working together is that there are lots of projects ongoing. There are lots of ideas out there. What we need is integration. And so that's our movement here is towards integration. And with that, I'm going to invite Lucian Tarnowski to take over and to talk about the Esalen Labs frame that brought us all together. Lucian? There we go. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Good morning from, I'm gonna show you this beautiful sunrise because it's always lovely to see a sunrise multiple times in a day. Um, we're here in San Francisco. And um, yeah, my name is Lucian Tanofsky and I'm um, the founding curator of Savannah. And I've spent the last 12 years um, in the communities design space, basically supporting multi-stakeholder communities to collaborate and coordinate their efforts. And um, this is a perfect example of that. It's, um, we brought together um, initially about 50 people um, from all over the world, that most of which were meant to be joining us um, for, a, for an innovation lab in Esalen uh, that was basically all around bringing a circle of people together to the birthplace of the human potential movement in, uh, in, here in California in Big Sur to kick off a uh, multi-month conversation um, and lab all around how we uh, respond to this moment. Um, we're all clear, and I'm sure if you're joining us here that you would agree with this statement that this decade is going to be the most important decade in the history of the planet. Um, this decade will determine the, um, the, the, the lives of not just our children, but our at least seven generations to come in the choices we're making now around around the environment around ai around um automation etc and so we've been calling it the golden decade and that it was that that brought this group of really kind of systems change uh makers and um, um architects of different um, social systems together um, in Esalen and obviously with Corona we weren't able to meet in person and so we kicked off this digital workshop really with three questions one is what is the unifying narrative of this time how can we bring people together around the world in a kind of team of teams to work on this great transition um, to meet this moment the second one was um, what are the great experiments of our time that we can be running around systems change because we don't need to tweak the existing system we have those of us coming together believe we need wholesale systems change we need to move from a win-lose system to a win for all system and um, so we wanted to look at what those um, small experiments can be small or large experiments can be that we can innovate around to demonstrate there's smarter ways of organizing ourselves. Because I think we would all conclude right now, if we were to redesign the world system, we wouldn't create it as it is today. Um, and that's actually proven by the Edelman Trust Report that did a global survey and four out of five people in the world say the system's broken and not working for them. Uh, and two out of three people say that the future is is they expect to be even worse and so it was that crisis of hope that we were responding to with these experiments and then finally the we wanted to look at how do we finance systems change not tweaking the existing system but wholesale systems change so what who are the funders we need to identify and what new methods of funding ecosystems can we um, identify to be able to fund these, this kind of rapid prototyping. So that was the framing questions. And um, what we had a lot of very experienced people come together to design this. And so what we came up with was a game format. And um, it might be, uh, it, it, might, it might sound, um, sound, you know, that games are kind of um, uh, not necessarily the way we're gonna transform the planetary system. Um, but in actual facts, um, get games, uh, watching games like World of Warcraft are some of the most watched 
YouTube content there is. And we figured that one of the really important things that needs to happen is to be able to invite the inner child forward, invite play and creativity, particularly when we're entering spaces where we don't know the answer yet. And so game, a game format was a really good way of, 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 of facilitating that. So what we wanted to do, given it was Corona times, was shorten the, the game cycles. And so what we did was come up with a alliance structure called the Unified Planet Alliance, UP Alliance. And then we introduced this game format on top that was designed as 50% yin, 50% yang. So it was 50% about being, um, about connecting deeply with yourself, about self-mastery. And then the other 50% was, was um, yang. So it was all about action and becoming. And what we did was set up these weekly cycles where we'd meet for eight hours each week. And we formed different um, horizontal and vertical structures. The vertical being designed around guilds and the horizontal being designed around um, uh, councils. And um, from that, um, we're going to kick off. Sarah, I'll, I'll give some examples of those in a moment, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Great. Thank you so much, Lucian. We'd really be interested to know uh, from you all what kinds of social experiments you might have been participating in or, or if your organization is uh, engaging in, in similar kinds of experiments. And obviously in the chat, we can't go into great detail, but uh, we're, we're looking here, as I said, to move towards integration. And so what we're presenting here, we don't suggest is the only way or um, necessarily even the best way. It's, it's, an, an, it's a way, and we want to link together to find out what other experiments might be going on. So if, if you, uh, during the course of this, please feel free to share that with us. Um, I think I, I'm presuming that the people who have joined into this workshop are people who share a similar vision of the need for wholesale systems change and have been working in each your own various ways towards that. And there have been many experiments over the last many years. And so a question I want to pose to you, Lucian, is what do you think is different about this experiment from other experiments that you've seen or been involved in. And there may be others of our team who want to chime in here as well. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. Um, just getting my, uh, my daughter settled this morning. <laughs> Took a quick moment upstairs. So um, the, the main difference is really, well, the first is the scale at which we're looking at. Um, we're really a team of systems designers that are looking at what, it, what is it, what is it going to take for us to break silos around systems change. So we're broadly focused on the sustainable development goals and beyond, really. And I would say of the SDGs, this is about SDG 17. How do we create partnerships for the goals? Um, <clears throat> what we're experimenting on is kind of rapid prototyping of um, innovation cycles of how do we bring community leaders in the field together um, and so that's what, what what we've done so far the the second is we, we're not a single organization but we're a, we're in a network that can easily bring others together and it, in this way it's 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 decentralized and distributed so it can expand it can expand in a in a in a um, in a very elegant way um, and this might be something where we Ray can speak to this, but um, we can give a couple of examples of where where ways this has been being applied. One one was um, the Meta Guild that maybe Sarah the the Meta Council that Sarah you can you can speak to, but we've been at Savannah House, which is this space we have in San Francisco. Um, we've been using it to create these um, dinner portal conversations where we've been bringing people together from around the world to focus on um, local solutions around things like food systems. And so we've been using this innovation cycle as a way to do that. Um, and with some great results, we had over a thousand people tune in uh, last week um, for, for, for a conversation about reimagining food. Um, so there's different formats that 
um, we've been um, applying already. And, um, you know, I would say that this, this is both digitally enabled and deeply connecting of the individual. Um, it's, it's bringing people into a sense of deep belonging and shared purpose and that they're part of something. Um, and, and I think that's something that is very compelling to draw people back to. Awesome. Thank you, Lucian. Uh, let me talk briefly about the Meta Council. So Lucian described the structure that emerged from our collaboration over these past few weeks. And he described the structure of having uh, verticals, which we're calling guilds, that are uh, deep into a particular domain like regenerative agriculture and the future of food or housing or uh, 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 mental health. Uh, and we have uh, verticals that we're calling councils that are addressing issues that cut across all of those domains. So one of the councils we have is called the Meta Council, M-E-T-A, and the Meta Council came together, uh, bringing together a group of people who are all really interested in these deep systems issues. How do you structure systems so that they are based on these principles of generating wellness and being regenerative instead of being extractive and based on a win-lose situation. And so the Meta Council has been meeting regularly uh, since the, the lab began and we're continuing to move forward. And there are two things we've been doing that I wanna share here uh, that I think may be relevant to others and to drawing you into conversation. Uh, actually, there's three things we've been doing that are related. So one is that we've been focusing on coming up with lists of qualities that the domains that are that need to be restructured should be evoking in people as a way of coming up with some unifying integrative ways to talk about how we're going to structure this this game how we're going to structure what we're creating so we're talking about what are the qualities of a, of a group that moves us towards life uh, and towards wellness what are the qualities of a technology or a a computer program or a technical solution that moves us towards wellness and that enables collaboration that's open and transparent and vulnerable? What are the qualities um, of other key domains that we need to restructure in order to build a new life together? What's the, you know, what are the qualities of a currency? And there are people in the medical Council who have already been thinking deeply about these issues on their own. Ray Powell is one who's on this call. Erez Asher is one. Uh, Corey Call is not joining us for this workshop, but he's another one. And so one of the things we've done in the Meta Council is we've created digital coffees and conversations to have people who are already doing deep thinking and planning on these issues to present their ideas and to bring together people who have different pieces of this puzzle so that we can start integrating them. And so as a result of this lab over the course of the last three weeks, Erez Asher, Ray Powell, Corey Call, and a, a fourth member, uh, Sakari Gulikin, who is uh, not joining us because he's moving today, but um, are, are starting to integrate uh, projects they've been working on for some time together and exploring in conversation, a one on one and in group dialogue within the Meta Council, how they can move forward to join their efforts uh, and integrate. The, so we're doing these digital coffees and we started doing these digital coffees with people within the lab, but we're looking to expand outwards and to draw in others who have existing ideas and projects that they're looking to realize into these digital coffees to start creating conversations about integration and how we actually take action together on these plans that are out there. So to developing a list of qualities, bringing together people to integrate, and then looking to do these digital coffees to bring people into new conversations about how to move forward uh, or what we're working on. And we invite your participation. So I, I know, Lucian, you've talked a little bit about Savannah House. Um, uh, do we want to talk about what an upcycle looks like? Or do we want Ray to jump in here and talk a little bit about uh, protocol.love and how that plays in here? And you're muted right now, Lucian. If I happy to give a quick overview of an upcycle that we've been building this around, and then and then and then maybe Ray can talk about the principles and where we're working on that. So, so firstly, um, 
I described this, that it was an eight hour, think of it as a radical imagination design sprint, um, where we're picking a group of, a, um, a group of people are coming together. They're being invited together. We've so far started with 50 and then we've been doing various other up cycles we've been calling them. We've been calling the up cycles. It stands for the up game, the unified planet game, which is built, which we're envisioning is built around this alliance. And, um, calling it an up cycle because it's a uh, one week cycle so it c an up cycle could be delivered in a single day as eight hours in one day but typically it's done over four days where we we the format we came up with was we would meet on monday at um, 10 a.m for two hours and that would be the first check-in where we would start with the first hour being focused on yin so as I mentioned, yin was about becoming, it's about deep connecting with others there in the, in, in the call. The second hour was about yang. So it was about um, becoming, it was about uh, collective thriving and action. And then we would meet on Tuesday for an hour at 10 a.m., Wednesday for an hour at 10 a.m., and then Thursday for two hours um, um, from 10 till, 10 till 12. And that was the format of this up cycle. And in between that up cycle for the main group, what ended up happening is people broke into these horizontals and verticals. So horizontals being councils, verticals being guilds. And so people would then have their own meeting schedule where we had, you know, Sarah talked about the meta council, but there were others around food and agriculture, mental health. And so each one of those um, individuals can meet when they want and then report back into the main group. Um, and so this was a really effective way of um, bringing rapid prototyping from a diverse group of stakeholders um, that um, have, have, have that bring lots of different skills to the table. So, do you want to, should we go into um, Ray next with um, talking about the, the the work we're doing around principles? Yeah, that would be great, Principles Ray. Principles and could, protocols. Yeah, if you could talk a little bit about protocol.lob. And so Ray's going to share, this is something he's worked on deeply for many years. And this is an example of some of the people who are being brought together to integrate their work into a new framework of action to move forward. Yeah, hi, Ray. good day, everybody. Um, thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Lucian. Um, I uh, <clears throat> had some channeling come through to me that, that it was very clear um, that uh, enabled my work of being a technical developer, programmer since 1980, um, to present an idea for a protocol that um, enables vulnerable transparency in our uh, socio-economic system. And um, I found that the fundamental pattern exists at kind of all levels of our conscious experience, that there's this fundamental dichotomy between love and control. and um, that the ways we can tap into our to 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 loving kindness and and is this is really the way we want to live in the world, and and the opposite of that is control. And we're living in a world where there's a lot of attempts to control things and to control resources at all levels. And this pattern is fundamentally incompatible with the natural flow of love evolution of the universe, right? To say it in woo-woo terms, excuse that. But uh, but yeah, it's very it's actually a technical protocol that defines what it is to be vulnerable, vulnerably transparent as an organization. And so um, you can read all about that at protocol.love, including the philosophy behind it. Um, you'll see a link to an article there. That is a URL, protocol.love. Um, so type that in. And it is, it is a proposal um, that creates an interoperability layer using some of the uh, most advanced distributed ledger technology through Holochain. Um, to allow a mesh network of organizations to self-organize on a planetary scale and to, for each individual and each player within that game to find their passion, find the way they want to contribute and find and, and propose their offerings to the world. And all it takes is a commitment to vulnerable transparency. And it's really not hard to do, actually. It's, it's quite a simple task. And from that commitment, of being transparent about the work we're doing and how we're doing it and who we're doing it with. Um, we enable everyone else to transparently see into 
the work we're doing so we can also see the work everyone else is doing and for networks to organically form and grow. And um, anybody who's interested, please feel free to call on me and learn more. Um, the URL is protocol.love and I will share it in the chat. And um, I'd be interested to talk to anybody um, who, un who, who agrees with that concept that vulnerable transparency really may be the key to steering this planetary ship in the right direction. Great, thanks so much, Ray. And Ray w is happy to talk to people further. And if you want to continue the conversation to hear more about what Ray is up to, you can reach out to him privately on the chat or send it to uh, send your desire to everyone as well. And as I've put into the chat, um, we're going to give a WhatsApp link at the end so that you can connect to our Unified Planet WhatsApp chat group, but also send us your email address if you want to stay in touch. Um, multiple points of contact are always good to make sure that connection really happens. So uh, at this point, I think what would be great, because we we're about halfway into our presentation, is we do really want to have some conversations with you and we can tell from the chats that there's interest in what we're talking about and we'd be curious to know what kind of problems you you might be facing now in your community in your organization in your own individual work where you feel that this concept of an upcycle that brings different people together from uh, different angles to work together might might help address let's see if we can get some dialogue going around some live issues that you have in your situation. So just go ahead and type into the chat and sorry is going to monitor that and we may not be able to get to everybody's input, but we will uh, pick a couple and see if we can generate some conversation. And I see some people need to leave already. That's great. We know people drop in and out. Uh, we really appreciate your being here and anybody who's left us uh, their contact information. We'll make sure you get the link to the WhatsApp group and, and that we keep you posted on what's going on. So while people are, are typing in uh, some ideas, uh, Lucian or, or Rachel, uh, I know that this Esalen lab that we've been a part of is part of a larger series of these labs that have been going on for the past three years. And I don't, and perhaps you want to speak to that larger experiment and kind of how we ended up at this moment. Sure. So what we've been looking at in over the, over some time, I've only been in this project for about a year or so, uh, but what has happened over time is what generated out of a myth lab concept. We really originally wanted to come together and gather to explore the myths that we've been telling ourselves that are the reasons why things haven't been working or even the myths about ourselves that might give us an overinflated perspective of what we think we need to know. And so it's, really about coming back into a place of humility of knowing that we actually don't know the answer and to think that we would assert an answer into this conversation would be over presumptuous of us but the true wisdom that we want to evoke within these conversations is the ability to ask the right questions right now and really have an opportunity to build that trust that Lucien was talking about from the yin perspective, uh, where we can build a level of affinity with each other to where that vulnerable transparency can truly be experienced and that the clear framework of structure that begins to create um, a way for us to navigate certain questions can then happen in a way that elevates our joy, our creativity, and our productivity. And when that happens, the synergy of what it is that we want to create from these highly ambitious perspectives are really um, much more attainable when we're able to see clear next steps with each other and um, having these support systems and 
phenomenal resource centers actually being gathered in a way to create something with people we actually want to spend time with. And um, what a great shift in thinking about how we can do things together in a new way that actually creates um, a for benefit for all participants and all environments that are surrounding that to create an all life or an omni considerate opportunity for people to be invited into to then exponentialize the growth perspective of what it is that we want to achieve together in a way that's meaningful for us that um, sparks the the fun part of doing work together with amazing people. Thank you so much, Rachel. That's great. Um, that's really great way to frame this more broadly. Uh, I want to present for some discussion um, a kind of case study that one of the participants here has has offered, and I happen to know about it because it's my friend Aline Rosenthal who's on this call. Um, Aline is a brilliant uh, functional medicine doctor from Chicago. She started as a yoga teacher. She was a chiropractor who led the largest female-led chiropractic clinic in the United States for many years. And then she has dived deeply into functional medicine, and that deep dive into functional medicine came partly out of her own experience having a very serious cognitive breakdown that was diagnosed actually as early Alzheimer's. And she brought herself back from that by using the principles of functional medicine and finding how to nourish herself, um, not just through uh, proper nutrition and supplements, but also spiritually um, by taking care of herself. Uh, she brought herself back from that in a pretty miraculous way. And she now has the mission of educating people how to prevent um, and even reverse uh, Alzheimer's. And she's been struggling to figure out how to achieve this because it, it, it needs to be done on a huge scale. And Aline is very aware of the inadequacies of the current doctor-patient framework, which is a centralized framework where you have the doctor at the center with the information, uh, controlling things and delivering that information uh, to patients and delivering care to patients. And so Aline has been working for a few years now, experimenting with different things, trying to figure out how she can achieve her goal of bringing the information that she and other functional medicine doctors have about how people can take control of their health out into the world. And part of the challenge, of course, comes also from the financial and economic system we live in because Aline needs to support herself sufficiently. And she's been struggling with how to get the resources she needs to continue to educate herself and, and be a, a, a source of information while also not falling into the exploitative and extractive patterns that have led our medical system to be on the brink of collapse in the face of a pandemic. So I want to put this before the people in our group, but invite other people here to participate in the conversation of what would an upcycle for Aline's problem, uh, what might it look like? What could we offer to Aline in this workshop to give her a way to go forward to draw others into a collaborative self-organizing effort to help her realize her vision? Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. You expressed that beautifully. and. Um, always remind me of all the components that I need to keep in mind. Uh, the heart of the, one of the most challenging is not just scale, which you express beautifully, but also how do you facilitate transformation in scale when it is so broad in scope? There's really not, there's so much valid information, knowledge now about how it is that we can recover, prevent, recover, from these debilitating conditions, but it's existing primarily in the form of information that is simply handed to people. And there's no ability for them to actually then incorporate that knowledge into the way they live their lives on a daily basis. And there will never be a pill for this. This sort of thing can only be prevented with the most holistic on all levels 
type of change in the way people are living their lives, ranging from every, almost all aspects of lifestyle to many specific nutritional and dietary um, protocols. But the basic is people have to understand, we have to reach people in a way that opens them up or allows them to, it's hard to find the right words, allows them to participate in a way where they see themselves as fully responsible and capable of making those changes. So, and that is a challenge. And of course, it is a big one because it is heading very heavily in our direction. And it's heavily, heavily heading towards women at a ratio of um, two thirds of those who are being diagnosed with Alzheimer's and cognitive decline are women. So I appreciate and look forward to any input. So I'd like to invite Erez Asher to step in here. He's a member of our Meta Council who folks haven't met yet, but he's a brilliant systems thinker. And I think that Erez might have some ideas here. Uh, and then I'd love for Lucian or, or Rachel to step in with some thoughts about what an upcycle might look like. Erez, if you wanna jump into the conversation here. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, what I'd like to offer everyone is a way to tie all these things together because we are in the midst of a global pandemic. Uh, we're essentially addressing a situation of illness as being sort of standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that in order to create the systems and the wellness within ourselves, uh, it is necessary to really understand what illness is, what wellness is, and how this all ties together. So illness we can define as a reduced ability to function, right? And when we define illness in this way, we can also understand wellness as its inverse, as an increased ability to function. And so by understanding illness and wellness in this way, we can understand that it's true of not only ourselves as individual human beings, but it's also true of any system, anything that functions, all living beings, anything that functions in any way can be seen as being either more ill or more well. And so in order to bind our efforts together on the, uh, on the health standpoint, on the, the economic standpoint, on the interoperability of how we are relating as human beings, in every aspect of how we function, that we are able to unify this understanding uh, because we see from the global pandemic that we are all deeply interrelated, that there is fundamentally no separation involved. It's just a matter of how we are all connected. And so one of the things that we have discovered uh, in uh, and seen again and again in our discussions has been that the, the information that is required uh, for us to, to know is already available in different pockets of our collective. And really, it's just a matter of how do we function in wellness? How do we increase our ability to function collaboratively, collectively? This cooperation is the basis of our wellness. The cooperation of our cells and our organs are what allow us to be well in our bodies. The cooperation amongst our individual uh, parties in a relationship is what allows a relationship to be well. The cooperation of individual members of a community or an organization or the elements of multi-organizational collaboration, it is the cooperation which facilitates wellness. And by really understanding this on a deep level and seeing that we can apply this universally, it gives us the glue, the, the basis of connecting with each other to cooperate more effectively, to bring about the wellness, at an individual, a relational, a communal, societal, global level, that it is feasible for us to do this by understanding and acting upon that understanding. So I believe now would be a great time to hand it over uh, to Lucien, correct? I think, Ra Rachel, do you, wanna, do you wanna start on that? Sure, uh, I'm also, uh, well aware of the conversations that are happening in the uh, chat room. 
as well, which is in a uh, huge alignment to what Eras and uh, everyone else has. <laughs> and one of the things that I would also like to suggest is that there is in fact a new level of technology that's being uh, accessed right now. And it's something that is, has nothing to do with our computer screens, but it has something to do with, as um, one of our friends in the chat room mentioned, um, several groups are actually instinctually beginning to do something very, very similar. And what a joy to have that opportunity being realized. And what an opportunity for us to continue to rise up together so that we can eventually begin to have these cross sections of largely diverse and yet sovereign and unified groups working through these collaborative efforts. And the way that these pieces can really truly happen is if we have the willingness to have the very honest and real conversations that build the level of trust that it is that we've been talking about so that the IP and the assumption of what we think we need actually becomes very, um, very transparent in what it is um, based on a needs versus wants perspective. And when you look at it from, from that way, it's not just time and financial resources. There's a whole other way to look at how to redefine contribution and value and success and towards shared vision and goals. And so the new game is actually not speaking to a person's black and white perspective of what it is that we think that they need or we think that we want from a relationship, but to understand that we are coming into a sovereign unification of a shared vision that we're willing to support each other through, and come thick or thin, because when we look at systems at, from a, a medical perspective, or from an infrastructure perspective, or even from a media and artistic perspective, there will always come a time when challenges reach an apex point to where you decide to move through the eye of the needle, or you choose to make excuses for why a job has not gotten accomplished. And when that happens, we fall right back in to the old game and we take for granted the wonderful opportunity that was given to us to bring the best of ourselves forward. And in the new game, hopefully what people are realizing is that the best of humanity gets to be the best of humanity together and experience what it feels like to have an all win scenario and thank goodness we have people that are in our group and in other groups around the world who are committing themselves to the level of detailed infrastructure agreement fields and expectations and accountability structures that's also a huge piece of what it is when we look at governance and infrastructure integrations um, that have us know what level of appreciation we're going towards. Because sometimes when we get into the old game perspective, the goals kind of become opaque for us, right? It's maybe it's just show up and do the thing that they asked you to do when we all know that most of the time that's not what needs to get done. What needs to get done is to bring in our own highest level of creativity into what it is that we want to do. And, you know, when we mention the, um, the concept of the illness that we are experiencing right now, um, I'm reminded of a study I did uh, on nanotechnology some time back. And what's interesting about how the body works is that it responds to um, not, not just well, actually, the, the nanotechnology responds to the way the body reacts to said experience. Let's just say that. And so 
This is an immune response to shift us from the illness to wellness perspective, the I to the we, to then come to an us identity that we get to experience. And not just us as humanity, but us from a biospheric awareness perspective, where we are truly coming back into relationship and unification, not with just each other from a human perspective, but into unification back with all life and all experience that we get to then become an active participant in truly playing with each other, all things, um, in a very new way that brings true reverence back into the way we do things and, and, and that level of innocence that Lucian talked about from the beginning of our conversation. Great, thank you, Rachel. Uh, I'd love now to have uh, perhaps Lucian and maybe also Erez, uh, and maybe Sari too, because I think Sari has some uh, thoughts here, uh, to give some very practical uh, advice to Aline about what would an upcycle look like? Uh, who could she bring together and what kind of process could she engage in to help her address her issue of how to scale what she envisions, and also how to bring funding into the ecosystem that she's seeking to create so she can sustain herself. Because I think we've all been in this place where we have spent ourselves in seeking to create the new world that we want to be a part of, but living within the extractive capitalistic frame that we are, we, we, if we spend ourselves too much, we end up ill which is what happened to Aline. And so we need to find ways to nourish and nurture ourselves sufficiently, uh, not excessively, but sufficiently to uh, allow our work to go forward. And that's really the uh, part of the uh, challenge that Aline is facing. So um, maybe uh, uh, we can have, sorry, are, are you willing to, to step up here and, and speak to this for a second? And then we can go maybe to Erez and Lucian. And I know also that we had a, a good question from Jenny, and I want to make sure that we address that before we uh, wrap up at the end, if we have time. Thank you for asking, Sarah. I would like to share some uh, questions uh, from our chat, if that would be OK at this point. So um, absolutely, absolutely. yeah, so uh, uh, Liz is asking here for any tips to get into a truly open mind space for a wholesale system change. We're all tied to the current system in some way, so it seems like we almost uh, need to get past the loss of those ties, even before they occur, before, before we can truly be open to seeing what could be, and then contributing to the creation of it. Do you have any thoughts on that? Maybe uh, Eris or, or, or Ray? I'll hand it over to Ray, actually. I think that might be a good question for Ray. Sorry, ask the question again. Um, OK, yeah. So any t I'm, I'm just going to shorten it a bit. I, <clears throat> I hope that's OK. Liz. I, could I could jump in there if you want. Sorry, and, and Ray, you build on this. OK. You know, I, I think that we're, we're absolutely at this tipping point. I, I often feel that um, many I encounter uh, feel like their, their whole life has been preparing them for this moment. And I think it's about now identifying not the people that you need to persuade, but the, the people that are already um, on the same page as you around the systems changes here. So the, the, the systems change is, is, is required and there's a transition team emerging. So I would just say from a mindset perspective, you know, one of the useful things I find is people like to stand for something rather than against something. People like to join movements that are for something rather than against something. Um, and so the more you can use positivity um, to bring people into that mindset, um, the better. And one of the best ways I found to do that is by bringing people into a direct experience of the future. And so we've been throwing these um, celebrations set in 2030 from um, all over the world. We've been, we've been doing them for just over a year now, where we will bring people um, together to tell stories of how we created a planetary civilization in 2030. So just a really practical way you could apply this is when you bring people together into a meeting, um, start by 
inviting what is their vision for what this problem set could look like in 2030. And what it does is it opens people up to the realm of possibility. Um, and it puts people into a creative play space where, where, um, where, where, where it's kind of like asking adults, what do you want to be when you, when, when you grow up? Um, and so hopefully that asks, uh, answers both Aline's question and the other question that was posted. Yeah, and in terms of um, getting, getting moving and getting in action um, with, with ideas that any, that any one of us may have for creating systems that are an omni-win for all life, um, protocol.love specification that I've developed provides a means of vulnerable transparency in what you're doing and what your ideas are. And in reaching the level of that kind of transparency, it, it proposes or it creates the space for a certain type of process to happen with a group of people. And for, for people coming together to work on a project to really um, identify the fundamental patterns that shift us out of the current paradigm that is not a win for all life and into a paradigm that is, there's some fundamental patterns in the way we begin to interact and the way we, we begin to discuss decision making, equity holding, and the different types of, of flows of energetic exchange we're gonna be involved in as a group. And so I um, personally, although I'm not you know, uh, really designed as a facilitator of groups, I have found myself in a position to be a reasonably okay facilitator because we have the goal of filling in the gaps and answering the questions about what does it mean to be vulnerably transparent as an organization. And just simply in, with that goal in mind, walking through a set of questions and a little, some processes um, that become obvious, to answer those questions really creates a deep coherence with a group um, and really creates a fundamental thought pattern about the work we're doing and the way we're working with each other that looks at power dynamics, that looks at exchange methodologies and decision-making processes in a whole new way in a fundamentally kind of, kind of way that, that I've, in my experience, really opens people's minds and I see a light bulb go on. And we can start thinking about social coordination at scale in whole new ways and it's not hard, right? So um, if there's any, anything I can ever support and people um, experiencing this for themselves or learning about protocol.love, again, I'm, I'm very much interested in facilitating any of that. Thanks, Ray. And I would sum up what Ray is talking about by saying that we have agreed within our labs group that because it's a holographic universe, because there's an implicate order, the way that we organize ourselves and the way that we start working together collaboratively is fundamentally part of the change that we are seeking to create. So part of the dysfunction, part of the illness of the system that we're coming from is that you have doctors and nurses who are driving themselves to illness in order to provide wellness to other people. Part of the dysfunction is that we've all been part of organizations where our own efforts and energies are blocked instead of freed and released. So we, the effort to, to start changing the world is happening right now in here, in this workshop, in this group of people who've come together in the last three weeks to try to create something new. And so we're challenging ourselves to work together in these new ways so that what we're creating together as a group becomes a seed, becomes something that other people can, can form around and becomes hopefully a model and a template. Again, not the only one, but one that can help people realize the vision of creating self-organizing, sovereign, collaborative groups that are able to work together in new ways and to create generatively culture together. And so I'm gonna, we have just a, a few minutes left. I want to uh, invite, um, uh, see, sorry if there are any other questions that we want to address in the last three minutes before we give Rachel the last couple of minutes to do a little closing uh, 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 ritual with us. Sorry, anything you want to bring up? Yes. Um, can we can we go back to Liz's question a little bit? I, I think there's more to it, and and uh, I don't know if you, Eres, if you feel that you could say something to it. But I I really feel that you have the answer to Liz. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, Eres about your onboarding. 
like how will we all on board because you you have a you 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 have a really great sense of that and maybe that would answer Lizzie's question yeah that's great sorry before you jump in there let me just say that i think we're all aware in this moment of the pandemic that many people are newly awakening and are newly confronting their own brokenness because they're forced to be with themselves in the shelter in place and so a question that we've been addressing as a group is how do we give tools to these people to help move them towards this regenerative vision instead of just having them fall back into the old patterns that are known and that lead to some kind of security because we're all aware in this moment of openness that, that there are many possibilities and there are possibilities that lead toward a new future and there are possibilities that are just settling back into the old patterns. And so Arez has been thinking about this deeply and he has some ideas. So Arez, would you share that with us, please? Thank you. I'll, I'll do my best to encapsulate all this in 90 seconds. So, uh, all right, three steps. Step one, feel. Just feel, allow the information to come in, whether it's in your person, as a system. It's important to feel, it's important to listen. You must be aware of your environment, of yourself. So one, feel. Two, love. Really care for, really support the wellness of, really allow for the feelings, the sort of internal knowing, the guidance, like I am here to support the wellness of myself, of others, of everyone and everything that I love, which is everyone and everything. Three, now be present, let go of the past, let go of the attachment to the past. The fixation on the past is not serving you in the present moment. We are in the now. You can let go of your fixation on the future. That's a fantasy. Be present. The way that we live, the way that we operate as individuals, as living beings, as organizations is in the present moment. That is how we function. So wellness only and illness are only in the present moment. So feel, love, now. I believe that's 90 seconds. And let me just add that Erez has actually developed a program that is, uh, I believe, uh, an eight or 12 week program to help embody, bring these, yeah, what is it, 18? Yeah, okay, so he, he's developed a, a specific program to help bring people into this presence and reality. And so people who are interested in finding out more about this particular tool, please reach out to Erez or reach out to our group at Unified uh, Planet, uh, the WhatsApp group. The uh, URL's been sent out, email addresses have been sent out. And I'm now going to turn this over to Rachel to let her close us out. But I'll also say we'll keep the, the room open for a few minutes after our official closing time so that folks who want to exchange through the chat or make sure that they capture the chat will have the opportunity to do that. This is also being recorded and it will be posted publicly. Rachel, take it away. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you so much to everyone who took time out of their day to be with us in this moment. And I'd like everyone to just close their eyes for a moment and feel the immense amount of energy and possibility and possibly inspiration and probably a lot of questions that you might have bubbling up inside of you right now. Hopefully this was a positive experience for you. And feel into, deeply feel into the reason why you decided to attend this conversation today with us. And feel that part of you that has so much love inside of you that you're willing to change everything about who you are, what you've been doing up to this point, how you see things in a radically new way that you've been holding for so long that you're ready to bring out into the world with fierce love and possibility and inspiration and seeds of hope to share with others. Now open your eyes and know that you have that moment right now to say,
the very next thing that you need to say, to do the very next thing that you need to do, and to be the very next thing that you need to be in order to bring that love out more fully into the world with the people that you care about and the causes that you care about and the reasons that bring the breath into your lungs and the beat into your chest. Thank you so much for being with us today, everyone. And we look forward to staying connected with you and growing our connections further and seeing what else is possible. Have a great day. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Sari. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks to all of our friends who showed up, and thanks to all the new people who showed up as well. And we look forward to being in communication. Sakari, so glad to see you joining us. I hope your move has gone well. Hey, I'm actually here in this new apartment where I moved in. <laughs> Been listening to this conversation. Awesome, thank you so much. I couldn't really join because there is still a lot of things to do at the moment. So I'm, I'm really happy you conveyed the energy really beautifully. So thank you. I was so glad that you could listen in. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. So I see that there are a few people who have uh, hung around, even though we're officially over our time. Uh, and it's up, of course, to the other members of this group. But um, with a smaller number of people, I think we could go off of mute and, and engage in some direct conversation if people want to do that for a few minutes. Is that something that people are open to doing? Sure. Yeah. One suggestion is maybe we stop the recording and, and restart it if we want, but that way we have a yeah. a break. Yeah. In our yes. Let's.